Hey everyone, with Black Adam out in theaters, I figured it was a good time to update my ranking of all 11 DCEU movies. I say 11 because I am not counting Justice League as its own movie, just the theatrical cut of Justice League. They're two different cuts of the same movie, done by two different directors. However, if Justice League did get its own slot, it would be number 11 out of 12. So, for those of you who are curious, all two of you. Anyway, as always, spoiler alert. Starting off, my number 11 is Suicide Squad. Aside from Justice League, this is the only movie in the franchise that I would label straight up bad. Then again, that's just me. Most of the acting is solid. Jai Courtney is easily the best part of the movie, in part because he's actually allowed to use his native accent. Courtney is the type of actor where he has charisma, unless he's required to do an American accent. Then most of that charisma just goes out the door. Captain Boomerang is the only member of the squad who doesn't have an underdeveloped backstory. He's just an alcoholic douchebag who carries a pink unicorn. And Courtney plays that to perfection. Margot Robbie is fantastic as Harley Quinn. I'm not a big fan of her outfit, but she plays the character very well. Viola Davis and Jay Hernandez are also very good. Some of the comedy is good, not a lot, but there are a few jokes that land. My favorite part of the movie, hands down, is this shot of June Moon turning into Enchantress. Enchantress. That is just awesome. I love Will Smith and he gives a solid performance, but I just don't buy him as a supervillain. An alcoholic anti-hero maybe, but not a supervillain. The action scenes are a mixed bag. They're well shot, but poorly edited. The editing overall is pretty bad and the pacing is just atrocious. I shit you not, this movie has two first acts. I guess that's what you get when you let a trailer house edit your movie, instead of just, you know, having them stick to what they're good at, editing trailers. There's also just a bunch of shit here that makes no sense. This is a world where Superman and Wonder Woman exist. And yet when Enchantress has the power to literally end the world, they send in the Suicide Squad. The Squad is who you send after someone like the Joker, not a General Zod level threat. Also, most of the characters have their backstories forcibly condensed and crammed in and it just doesn't work. El Diablos is the only one I found even remotely interesting. And also the villains just kind of suck. My score is two and a half out of five. Number 10 is Wonder Woman 1984. This movie is shamelessly joyful, infectiously bonkers, and painfully relevant in this day and age. It's also a mess. Gal Gadot is delightful. Chris Pine is great as usual. All right. Again. I pray that isn't true. There's a there's a wonderful big world out there, this this crazy new world. And I am so happy I got to see it. But it deserves you. The 
pacing is good, the action is pretty good, Hans Zimmer's musical score is great. The one area where this movie kind of improves on the first one is the third act, which actually feels like a natural continuation of the plot, rather than, well, what we got in the first movie. Cheetah is a pretty fleshed out and pretty sympathetic villain. There were a couple missteps in her story. The biggest one being that we don't really get to know her as well as we could have. We mostly just get to know how the world sees her, how the world perceives her rather than who she actually is. Kristen Wiig's performance is solid and she proves that her dramatic acting rivals her comedy, so there's that. Maxwell Lord is a little bit more fleshed out and also pretty sympathetic as a villain. He's not evil, he's just easily corrupted. Although, again, there was some wasted potential because we don't really get any insight into his character until the climax. On the downside of things, this movie suffers from a double case of broken Aesop, which means it contradicts a message or moral it's trying to convey. Maxwell Lord seems to be an indictment of 80s consumerism and capitalism as a whole. However, the rest of the movie goes out of its way to glorify 80s fashion trends, ritzy apartments and office spaces, fancy cars, and shopping malls, i.e. representations of those very things. Also, for all Diana's talk of how she has given so much for the world and wants only one thing, Steve, in return, she has an enormous condo, tastefully decorated, with a gorgeous view overlooking the Potomac, i.e. the exact sort of space that someone like Lord might covet. Diana may not covet more in the way that Lord does, but she still indulges to a hefty degree. Also, the moral of never take shortcuts that Diana learns from Antiope rings kind of hollow when you remember that Diana is a princess and a demigod who was able to enter the toughest athletic competition in Themyscira when she was a child and nearly outclassed her older, more seasoned opponents thanks to her royal status and supernatural abilities. My score is three out of five. Number nine is Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. As always, I'm going off the Ultimate Edition because theatrical cut is hot garbage. The casting here is pretty on point. Batfleck is badass, Gal Gadot is delightful, and Henry Cavill is great. Jeremy Irons, Amy Adams, Lawrence Fishburne, Holly Hunter, they're all solid. The action is great. I wish we'd gotten more of it, but I'll take it. The warehouse fight is legitimately one of the best fight scenes in any superhero movie I've ever seen. The visuals are also on point. Like 300 and Watchmen, there are so many moments in this movie that when you pause it on that moment, it feels like something ripped straight from the comics. The music in this movie is great. The main heroes and the villain each get their own distinct themes and they're all solid. I also really dig this movie's Batmobile. It's not my favorite, but it's pretty cool. Doomsday and Lex Luthor are meh. I don't love them, but I don't hate them. My score is 3.5 out of 5. Number eight is Black Adam. There are fun kid characters and there are annoying kid characters. This movie's kid character is somewhere in between. He's more fun than annoying, but he is annoying sometimes. This movie is no masterpiece, but it's a hell of a fun popcorn flick. But honestly, it's a movie starring The Rock, so that should be expected. Dwayne Johnson proves that he is definitely the right choice for the lead role. He is great. However, it's Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fate who absolutely steals the show. He is just fantastic. Most of the visual effects are solid, not all of them. When Black Adam finally willingly depowers himself, it's very clearly just the rock's head composited onto a smaller body, and they didn't do a very good job with the compositing. But aside from that and a couple other things, the visual effects are on point. The action is awesome, the music is very well done. The humor mostly works. 
If I had a nickel for every 2022 superhero movie that featured a running gag with one of the main characters trying to come up with a catchphrase, I'd have 10 cents. Now that's not a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. The Justice Society are all fun characters who have at least some depth and at least some character development. Hawkman gets the most of both, and Aldous Hodge's performance is fantastic. Noah Centineo is probably the weakest link of the bunch, but he's not bad by any means. He's just the least good. He's still very funny and natural, so credit where it's due. And despite this, out of the three, out of those three anyway, my personal favorite is Quintessa Swindell as Cyclone. She's funny and quirky and also a total badass, and the way they bring her powers to life is just gorgeous. Woo! Look at that suit. It's cool. Thanks. You too. Cyclone, smash her. Now is your time. Not me. I don't fly. I get big. That's what I do. My main problem with this movie is that although it does a good job of borrowing bits and pieces from other superhero movies and blending them together into something new, it kind of forgets to forge its own identity in the process, which is always important to do. So here's hoping any sequels they make do a better job of that. A score is 3.5 out of 5. Next up, number 7 is Man of Steel. Look, say what you will about Zack Snyder, he did something that at least one other and arguably better director failed to do. He launched the DCEU. Yeah, two years earlier, Green Lantern was supposed to do that, and that was directed by Martin Campbell, the man who gave us Casino Royale and Goldeneye. Henry Cavill is great. I know some people complain about him killing because Superman has always valued life, but they're missing the point. This is a Superman who hasn't reached that point yet, and he reaches that point the hard way. This is a Superman who learned to value all life because he was forced to take one in order to save others. If you love these people so much, you can mourn for them. Don't do this! begged Zod to stop, and Zod said, Never. So he had no choice. It was either kill Zod or let innocent people die. He doesn't have the Phantom Zone to lock Zod up, so what else is he supposed to do? You can see the anguish and the regret in his face, and you can hear it when he screams. Amy Adams, Russell Crowe, and Lawrence Fishburne are all great. Kevin Costner and Diane Lane are both very good. The real standout here is Michael Shannon as Zod. He, ugh, he takes his character in a different enough direction from Terrence Stamp's version to make him stand out, and he is just fantastic. And Ancha Trow somehow manages to outshine him as Fiora All, which is no easy feat. The action is well shot and well edited. It's visceral and exciting and heart pounding. I do agree that the final battle goes on for a little too long, but I don't really mind that much. Superman's first flight in this movie is nothing short of epic, and Hans Zimmer's score in this movie is one of his best, in my opinion. My score is 4 out of 5. Number 6 is Aquaman. This movie is the film equivalent of good overacting. It's completely over the top, it knows it, and it does not care. It is entertaining as hell. It's colorful, and it's cheesy, and it takes itself seriously enough, but not too seriously. Speaking of colorful, this movie foregoes the washed-out color palette of some of the previous movies, 
And it's just vibrant and full of color and ugh, Atlantis looks amazing. The acting is mostly good. Jason Momoa is clearly having a blast. Patrick Wilson makes for a great villain. Willem Dafoe, Nicole Kidman, Yahya Abdul-Mateen, and Tamura Morrison are all good. And Amber Heard, well, the less we say about her, the better. Hashtag recast Mira, hashtag Amelia Clark. The action overall is solid, but there are two action scenes that really stand out for just not cutting. <laughs> Aside from one or two jokes that don't land, the humor is really good overall. There's also a bit of a cliche dodge I love. In a lot of movies, a character will have a dead parent and they will go on to do something bad. And when they do something bad, someone will ask them, what would your dead parent think? Well, in this movie, Black Manta would have an answer to that, which is, my father told me to get revenge. He encouraged me to kill Aquaman. I love that. It's not something everyone would notice, but I love it. My score is four out of five. Number five is Wonder Woman. God, I love this movie. Gal Gadot is not a great actress, but she's still very good in this role. Chris Pine is great, and Lucy Davis is just hilarious. I've said, I might sound like a broken record here, but the action is solid across the board, even the final battle. The slow motion is different enough from Zack Snyder's style of slow motion to stand on its own, so that's something. Cinematography is pretty great and the choreography kicks ass. You will train her harder than any Amazon before her. Five times harder. Ten times harder. Until she is better than even you. But she must never know the truth about what she is or how she came to be. the humor in this movie. It feels very natural as opposed to feeling like it was inserted into an already completed script. You know, like Suicide Squad. Musical score here is one of the best in the DCEU. It draws bits and pieces from BVS, but it also just does its own thing. The villains are fine. The final battle is whatever. I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's, it's fine. The score is 4.5 out of 5. Number 4 is Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey. This movie is everything Suicide Squad should have been. It's rated R, the tone is consistent, and most importantly, it has relatable stakes. That's what I love about this movie. The conflict isn't trying to save the world from some massive threat. It's smaller, it's more personal. Harley dumps the Joker, but in doing so, she loses her social immunity, so now she has to deal with everyone coming after her for all the bad shit she's done. Which is a lot of bad shit. She is an anti-hero, after all. Murder Robbie is fantastic. Journey Smollett-Bell and Rosie Perez are both great. Ella J. Basco is very good in her debut role. From what I know of Cassandra King from the comics, this is her in name only. Like the filmmakers, I wish they had been allowed to do a comic-accurate portrayal. However, Mary Elizabeth Winstead absolutely steals the show. Ewan McGregor is wonderfully flamboyant and sinister. Chris Mazzina is... Also solid, and those two have great chemistry, and they are clearly having a blast. The action is well shot, and the editing uses long enough cuts that you can see what's going on. There are some choreography issues with the final battle, but I don't really mind. It's not that big of an issue for me. The humor is pretty consistently funny. Harley and her egg sandwich is still a better love story than Twilight. 
I love that they poke fun at the fact that Huntress is just your typical anti-hero out for revenge, but they also play that realistically in that she was raised to fight from a young age, so she doesn't have a lot of social skill. She is prone to outbursts of anger, and she doesn't have her one-liners and quips ready to go on the spot. She has to practice them in the mirror ahead of time, and even then, she doesn't always nail them. And I also love the running gag where she's trying to make a name for herself, but people keep calling her the crossbow killer. When she was ready, and by ready I mean a badass motherfucking killing machine, she moves back to Gotham, starts working on that kill list. She has the murder stuff down, but the rest... Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Still a work in progress. Do you know who I am? The crossbow killer. They call me. The crossbow killer. They call me. The crossbow killer? They call me. It's Huntress. She calls herself Huntress. Fucking fabulous if you ask me. My score is 4.5 out of 5. Number three is Justice League. This is a tale of epic proportions told with style and substance. It runs twice as long as its theatrical cut, but it's worth almost every minute. Most, if not all, of the positive aspects from Joss Whedon's version are present here, making WB's decision to bring him in as a replacement definitively pointless. Here's hoping they learn their lesson. Now that there's been a change of leadership, there's actually a good chance that they did. The lengthy runtime gives Snyder plenty of time to flesh out all of the new characters and some of the returning ones as well. Steppenwolf's appearance is finally as awesome as his voice, and he actually feels like a real character with an actual personality and clearly established goals and motives. The CGI and the soundtrack are much better than they were in the theatrical cut. Were you here when I was forced out? Now my foolish boat is leaning Broken love load on your rocks Here I am, here I am Waiting to hold And Judd Gieckso's musical score is also great. The score is 4.5 out of 5. Number 2 is Shazam. Or rather, Shazam! Because when there's an exclamation point in the title, you are legally obligated to shout the title. That is a law, right? Because otherwise I'm going to feel pretty silly. Anywho, as is the case with most of these movies, the acting is just solid across the board. Zachary Levi perfectly embodies a kid trapped in a man's body. Mark Strong makes for a solid villain. The other foster kids are all good, especially Grace Fulton. I love that the disabled kid, Freddy, actually has his own personality and goals instead of just disabled being his personality trait. Cooper Andrews and Marta Millens have very good chemistry and feel like a real couple, and they feel like, and they also just feel like real caring foster parents. And Jamon Hansu is a total badass, as always. The humor almost never misses. Eugene not realizing it's nighttime because he's been playing the game on his laptop for so long. Billy not being able to hear Savannah's evil gloating monologue because he's too far away. Darla just being adorable. I love it. Oh, and I also love the bit where when they're getting ready to go look for Billy, Darla takes the longest. And later, when they all get their powers, her power is super speed. A little detail that I absolutely love. The action is well shot, edited, and choreographed. I love when they all become superheroes at the end. I'm not super familiar with the comics, so I was actually surprised by that. All hands on deck. Say my name. Billy! Really? 
No, not my name. No, the, say the name that I say to turn into this guy. Shazam! this movie actually gives us a positive portrayal of the foster system. It's something not nearly enough movies do, so thank you for that. The score is 5 out of 5. Finally, my number one is The Suicide Squad. James Gunn is a mad genius and a national treasure who must be protected at all costs. The Suicide Squad is his masterpiece. The acting is all great. Daniela Melkor gives a standout performance as Ratcatcher 2. She is the emotional heart of this movie. Idris Elba, Margot Robbie, Joel Kinnaman, John Cena, David Desmalchian, Sylvester Stallone, and Viola Davis are all good, if not great. And the rest of the cast is solid as well. The action, comedy, music are all great. The cinematography and editing are great. The directing is great. So bad that Characters are all fleshed out, and all the, le the leads all get their own character arcs. And most importantly, for all the humor going on and the wackiness, the emotional moments genuinely work. A score is 5 out of 5. Hey everyone, what's your ranking? Let me know down in the comments. Like and subscribe and all that. If you don't like the video, subscribe anyway. I'll take any feedback I can get, even if it's negative, you know, constructive criticism and all that. That's all for now. Stay safe in these crazy times.